Mahika. This is Kylie and thank you for joining us on Heartbeats of Hospitality. Thank you, Kylie, for having me. And first of all, let me thank Riff, my favorite individual who has inspired us uh, in the industry in Sri, uh, Sri Lanka. And um, I, I think he is the one who encouraged me to do this. So I'm glad I'm part of all of this. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Thank you very much. And if the viewers, you don't know Riff, Riff is actually episode five of Heartbeats of Hospitality. Go and watch his interview. Very entertaining, very fun. And uh, he's entertained a lot of people and also inspired many. Yeah. Thank you very much anyway for joining us today from Sri Lanka. So Mahika, um, can I ask you, uh, how long have you been working in hospitality and what do you do now? Okay, so I've been in hospitality for over 20 years, so that shows my age. Um, <laughs> but I've been predominantly in the discipline of brand communications and PR. However, uh, you know, in hospitality, for the 20 years you've been, you tend to grow with your skills and your strengths. And even you get the opportunity to build your character as to what you want to do in the future. So I think uh, right now I'm like an all-rounder. I would say I'm relearning, learning, unlearning, and doing all of this to make it a more productive and I would say a smarter uh, work situation right now. So I am actually a lot of challenging uh, positions in the horizon. So you, you'll you understand where I'm going from this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So what is your next role then? What does your next role look like? Okay. Oh, sure, so my next role, um, so there are a lot of people in the industry who see potential in us. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are people who are actually mentors in the industry who actually in a very secretive way, they are actually mentoring us mm -hmm. and they see potential in us and they have actually um, uh, pushed us into a different realm. Even in this time of, you know, this pandemic ha actually has been a very positive pandemic for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe um, they feel, you know, and we've had so much of, training and education and qualification in the aspect of being an all-rounder in the, in the industry. A specialist role is good because those are your passions that you really uh, you know, bring out in. But right now, our industry has a dearth of people with instilled in the industry so that we bring a different realm of hospitality, which is more productive and more smarter mm -hmm. to the work front. So my new role is going to be um, like a guardian of a few wonderful group of villas. So it'll be, a, it, it'll be a challenging one, but I think it's going to be a good one. That sounds very exciting. So from brand yeah. communications to um, like a guardian angel of, of private villas, that's wonderful. Yes, wow. Absolutely. Okay. Predominantly, um, it's about the brand enhancement, uh, the brand of it, and the whole messaging of the whole villa concept. Because now it's becoming where people are going to isolated situations like that. Mm -hmm. So that's where this uh, group of mentors have seen, um, um, you know, us growing, and they want us to be in that area, which is a challenging one, but then if they have the potential, if they see the potential, it's good for us to take on that challenge. Of course, and especially when there's opportunities that's knocking your door, you have to take it, yeah? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Right. Okay, um, so what drew you into hospitality in the first place more than 20 years ago? Um, okay, so, I've always, okay, as a child, um, I've always been so amazed by the, I called it the air hostesses at once upon a time in an airline, okay? Um, I've seen the way they, you know, they're so kind to people and so ready to, you know, make our, you know, our, I was a child then, of course, and how our whole experience in the aircraft uh, to make it so 
beautiful for us because we were going on a very long journey. So in order for us to have a great time and we didn't even feel it. So I kind of like this whole idea of, uh, how would you say, kindness, be, becoming a source of kindness to society, you know? So, um, and also I like this whole aspect of seeing the world, understanding the different cultures, experiencing different kinds of food, different kinds of lifestyles, different kinds of traditions. And of course, feeling this whole aspect of the world. And the only way you're gonna get it through is this biggest um, economy that is uh, all over the world, which is hospitality. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what actually drew me into hospitality. So it's, it's more or less, it was, I wanted to be a, expert in it mm, okay that's nice um okay and you've worked with uh you've worked with this industry for about 20 years now so what has kept you inspired or motivated throughout all these years okay so i mean so if if somebody wants to actually get into this whole angle of hospitality you have to understand that it's it's not only about yourself Okay, you have to know that it's not about, okay, it's not my problem. We always say there is not, it's not my problem, but it is our problem. And it is a thinking of like a humanity. Mm -hmm. It's thinking of like a humane aspect of it to say, how can I be a service for this whole industry? Mm -hmm. So it's a teamwork collaboration. So it's always, yes, you have your specialized skills, Mm -hmm. But always each of us have our beautiful personalities that make it a great unit. So I feel uh, teamwork makes that whole dream work. And also understanding that you're not stuck in this whole angle of a cubicle, always, you know, an office space. You need to walk around, say hello to people, because that's the only way we would know that people are enjoying themselves and they are actually won't have any problems. And you have to have that in your character. You have to have that person where you initiate the first uh, chat, the initiate that first greeting to say, I hope your stay was well, you know, so you need to have that within your blood, in your DNA. So, um, and that also makes me like it more because I am not an office person. I am when it comes to writing and my storytelling, but I am a more walking about understanding people and understanding that human touch point, you know, so that it makes it happen. Um, also, I like the whole industry is because you, from a person, from a, uh, from a, uh, from a diverse culinary expertise, you find, you see the world actually, you experience the world. And those are little aspects, like even if you don't step out into another country, you can learn so much. You can actually really learn so much from being in this world of hospitality because you meet so many people and you know that certain things you learn, that you certain things you can't say to certain people, certain people you can't shake hands, certain people you can't give a hug, you, certain people, uh, you know, there are things you learn about. But it's, it's also being respectful, right? So because you have to understand each people, each person's uh, culture differs. So I think it's nice to learn about people. And it's that diversity that makes me be in that industry. Ah, okay. So yeah, it's like uh, working in one place, but seeing the rest of the world. That's what I'm Absolutely. hearing, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Mahika. Can you share a nice story with us about your work experience? Like one very memorable story that you've had in the last 20 years. Yeah. Um, okay, so there are many, but this stands out a lot because I think it was very, uh, how do you say, momentous in, the, in Sri Lanka. Uh, because I think um, after 30 years of a, civil strife that we went through, we had, I was part of a pre-opening team of a 
iconic heritage property of Sri Lanka. It had so much of potential, but we that the owner took his the advantage of you know even closing it up for two years. That means he lost a lot of business, but he knew that he has to restore it to what the world wants right now. So we were part of this historical, I, I would say a pre-opening team. And this was not, a, there was no templates. Now, you know, for an international chain, we have templates of that opening. So there is a whole pre-opening team that comes down, but here there was no template. So we had to create the whole pre-opening with a group of people that came, I mean, the group of us, uh, and we, we opened it. And it was the biggest or the foremost, grandest um, opening that Sri Lanka saw after the 30 year strife. So I thought that was, I was very much part of it. And that was really, really nice. And that kind of leadership is very rare because the person who led this whole team, he actually led through, to, uh, he led us through the, not through the front or the, uh, sitting at the back but alongside of us so we were all one team mm -hmm. and he made sure there was a purpose to it there was the values of what we had to take from our owner we didn't want to be dis disrespect our owner because he he always had this whole property running in his blood so we didn't want to disrespect that we took all of that into a whole plan and we executed a distinguished opening that I don't think anybody would talk about. So that is etched in my head, how we worked as a team and it, you know, different personalities, but we always had one purpose and it worked out beautifully. That's beautiful. One team, one dream, one way. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful i would love to visit that hotel wow okay oh, would love to when you come here you make sure you contact me and i'll take you there excellent i'll make my way back to sri lanka again for sure <laughs> okay <laughs> um well i mean it, you you've got a wealth of experience here so um let's say I mean, we are going through another very monumental time in, in our lives right now, you know, with the pandemic. And I think also for Sri Lanka, it's been, I think, more than a year of like a standstill in tourism as well. Um, so for the hospitality professionals, right, um, that's working in Sri Lanka or, you know, even globally, what do you think that we need to do to reestablish ourselves for you know to get ready for when the world is traveling again and when the world is coming back to sri lanka for example what do you think we should do to establish correct um uh, so i think we have always been i mean i i think this pandemic that came about um and ho all of this physical distancing um, I refuse to say it's a social distancing because if not you and I will never talk if it's social distancing, but it's all this physical distancing actually, I think gave us self-reflection. Okay. So I think um, people have to understand that exhaustion never paid off. Okay. So you need to stop working harder, but working smarter. You know, every time people think, you know, draining your soul, draining your days and nights just to work to make certain things happen, it, that's not going to work. You need to work with like delegating, saving, simply saving labor, you know, trying to find ways to do things smarter. That is one way. We really need to look at and everybody will be happier then. And, in the, you know, it's, it's, it's a productive uh, component overall. It will become a very happy place. Um, also, you, you know, if you work smarter, you conserve a lot of energy. So when you do have some kind of an outburst of some sort, you have this whole lot of things conserved and you, you know, you have this... Um, 
a lot of energy for the times that you really need to use it. Because sometimes what has happened is we worked so hard that we don't even have the we don't have in the breathing space when the times are good. So we are all drained out, either we are falling sick or there is too many people, you know, so many things are happening. So I, I feel that, you know, you taking this uh, long pauses that we have taken, you know, and understanding that energy is best utilized when we use it smarter, you know, so not to work it as a it's like a high every time you working till 10 o'clock in the night is not working smart it's working hard that means you've drained yourself out so you we need to look at things a way to work smarter then of course this whole angle everybody says let's multitask 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 it is not multitasking i mean i actually wouldn't want somebody who multitasks i want a person who actually wants to combine tasks I can, I can do a lot of things if I combine it and make it one, you know, multitasking is something, I mean, it's not a, it's not a plus point. It's for me, it's actually a bad idea. You know, it's, it's, it's a very reactive and unproductive thing. I, that's, that's the word. It's, uh, it's a reactive pr approach as opposed to a strategic and an efficient approach. So combining tasks is actually a strategic and an efficient approach. So these are the things that we need to look at uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, we we have to boost our confidence and inspiring, you know, inspiring times. Like, you know, I've always looked at, you know, there are times when I ha I needed some kind of confidence when I was in my previous uh, places that I used to run to people like Riff to talk about stuff, just to, you know, vent our frustrations you know so we don't need to run to riff all the time you know we if we have our own mechanisms to boost people's inspirations people's confidence you know everybody is different we don't need to run in this whole race because your strengths differ to mine and you know we collaborate it actually we can do fantastically well so if people understand that and not think that you know I'm trying to take your job and I'm she's trying to take my job. Everybody will be fine. This stressful thing, you know. And another thing um, I I wrote down uh, actually what I I felt whilst um, this whole pandemic is going on, you know, if, when you think of uh, putting your creativity, you need to put your creativity to full throttle right now you know so you know you need to use it you need to try it you need to uh, work on it and this whole angle of this day job concept of um, you know I'm working from nine to five so from nine to five I need to create you know it, it doesn't you know sometimes when you're going on the car in your car you tend to think about certain things and then you put it into perspective and you start always thinking creatively because now I think this whole um, area is about storytelling mm -hmm. you know so when you start telling stories about everything uh, it becomes that whole human factor comes into play and it becomes that quality of life as opposed to the quantity of life so I, I think uh, things like that make establish I mean re-establish our of um, hospitality industry and make it yeah and make it a good place to work actually you know so i feel those are the things that we need to really look at i hope you i hope it's yeah. clear so i'm <laughs> going to quickly summarize what you said mahika so work smart not work hard <laughs> that's right boost that's right. your confidence and your inspiration yeah. combine task not multitask absolutely and Creativity at full throttle. That's right. So that you have the quality of life and make it a very happy working place instead of having the quantity of work that boggles our life. I love Absolutely. that. That is fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you, if you have that quality of life, you will increase your self-esteem. And self-esteem is very important because half of these problems that are happening in this world of mental illness 
and all of that and people feeling so isolated and lonely and all of that is comes from your self-esteem so you need to be kinder to yourself first mm -hmm. in order to be kind to somebody else so you need to start doing things like that so i think it's, it's a good thing fantastic thank you so much for sharing that um no problem at all. that is a little bit closer to your home and your heart yeah um, how do you see the changes in environment in Sri Lanka's hospitality when the borders open? What, what, what do you foresee that would happen in Sri Lanka? And what do we okay, need so, to be prepared for? Yeah, so um, with all um, what's, what's happened from what we see, the impact that it has had, um, you become, you know, a person, a traveler, with a purpose. Now all of these travelers will be looking for, this ethical traveler is going to come. It's not the person who's more pro-sustainability, pro-social justice, pro-community outreach, you know, and all of these um, big hotels, city hotels, I'm sorry, it's going to be only 7%, okay? so. Uh, it's all going to be um, going into the different little the villas or areas that are more destination related to either indigenous medicine or wildlife, anything related to well-being and anything related to health. So we've got that. In Sri Lanka, we have that in a uh, predominant way we do have that in a very compact area. But the city will be only, I don't think it will be so much for the new traveler. The traveler will always want to look at this health and wellness being their main purpose. So they would want to be out in nature, out and about where it's a slow travel kind of concept. So. I see the tourism behavior is going to be more towards uh, no long haul flights. It will be those short haul um, destinations that they're looking for. They will look at more, they'll move away from crowded places. They'll want curated experiences that are you know, predominantly synonymous to the destination. Like for even agro-tourism. Uh, somebody doing sustainable farming and having a place to stay, they would love that. I can see that happening. And um, people like to get into this whole Ayurveda. We are known for our Ayurveda, you know, this very indigenous, you know, the yoga, the meditation. So that kind of thing will definitely inspire a lot of people because of what has happened throughout the many months that has gone, what we have gone through. So I feel these are the areas that will, the tourism tourists will demand more. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, so what I, what I find as well is that the trends of tourism and hospitality has always, you know, actually gradually had started to move in the last maybe five years into an experiential kind of tourism uh, okay. where, and sustainable tourism as well, because you know, of global warming and things like that. So um, I think it's fantastic because this is, this is, we make use of the natural resources that we have and we, we actually allow tourism to flourish yet helping you know the country grow in a way where it's it's also uh, sustainable it's uh, it's going to be a great experience for the tourists we don't have to take away the identity of the country and the culture Absolutely. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and even becoming um, into sustainability if we try to get into sustainability it's it's a lot of there is a process sustainability is like a 14 page document mm -hmm. so even if you want to get into something like that you we can get our yield up you know we don't need to have a whole lot of uh, people coming in but we can get our yield meaning our prices up because of the sustainability angle to it so we do have advantages like that but we have to do it sincerely 
not just say we are sustainable and we have other things, you know. So I think we are all getting into this and I think our uh, industry is also becoming very uh, close-knit. So it, it makes sense for us to get into all of this kind of uh, tourism aspects. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to going to Sri Lanka again. So now I have to go and see the hotel. I have to get an Ayurvedic massage and yoga. <laughs> that sounds fantastic, Mahika. You're, you'll be expecting me very soon. <laughs> oh, good for you. I'll be there to welcome you. Uh, okay. So Mahika, I'm going to give you a superpower right now, okay? I'm going to give you a superpower to change one thing in this industry globally. What would you change in the hospitality industry? Um, this mindset that, you know, the mindset that we will never change. Like, for example, I don't know how to say it. We are, hospitality is a constant change. There is this whole angle that you are constantly keeping your pulse on emerging trends to avoid disappointing guests. But so we don't think there's change going to ever happen. You know, we think that one way and we have to think that every time this whole mindset of change is inevitable, change is going to happen because tourism behaviors change, Prior, priorities of people change the way they want to think, the way they want to enjoy their time or where they spend a lot of money changes. So we need to keep track with those trends. We need to see the change in guest behaviors. We need to see the technology that is shaping up this whole guest journey. You know, we, we, we need to keep ourselves in that change mode and also, you know, we, we need to understand this one size or one way of uh, tourism is not going to work. It, it's not going to work. It's, it's all about service delivery and how we change according to the guests. And we need to have that adaptability, that, uh, that kind of flexibility, just in case you come in to my hotel and you want to have breakfast at 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I can't say, no, it's lunchtime. That is your lunch breakfast. I need to give you that. <laughs> I will give you that. You know what I mean? So you, we can't say that, oh, no, no, it's lunchtime. It's no. People are changing. People want, how do I know what you're going through? I need to be what you want us to be. You know, it's, it, that's how it should be. So being uh, smart and being intuitive and understanding that, that yes. So beast under the whole mindset of change is what we need to have in our mind and people understanding that change is inevitable. <laughs> Am I passionate enough? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yes, I completely agree that like, you know, if you want to have breakfast at midnight, go ahead, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Absolutely. How would I know? I mean, you must be going through something. You must have slept throughout. I, I mean, but that is your, your holiday and your holiday has to be spent the way you want to spend it. Mm -hmm. So we have to be wise enough to understand where you're coming from. So that's, those are the things we need to Okay. I think we're having a little bit of a connection problem, so let's just wait it out for a few seconds. I think we're back on again, Mahika. Sure, sure I'm here. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the power to change is to give the people in hospitality the the mindset that change is inevitable. Yep, okay, I think uh, one of the things that we realize as well is that this industry actually has not changed as much for maybe the last 30 years, you know, before we automated a lot of things, had computer systems. Um, after that, nothing, we really have not been changing exponentially like you know there are a lot of other industries like retail changes really really quickly the way they work um even airlines work very quickly with, with change you know but for some reason hospitality is kind of seeing in a very stagnant way yeah yeah Correct. 
So you know what? I implore you. I implore you to actually come up with ideas and share it with us, you know, whenever um, with the heart of hospitality, with the rest of the people that are joining us here, you know, it will be fantastic to hear from you. What do you think we can change? What do you think we should change? You're so passionate about change that I would love to have you, you know, (laughs) share all these with us. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to do anything for the industry because I love the industry and I want it to grow. That's so great. That's so great. I feel exactly the same. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, so cool. um, Mahika, I'm going to have to pick your little heart here and say, what is your one word core value that you uphold every single day at your work? Tenacity. It's that perseverance for, um, so I believe in this journey of what you, if somebody wants to say, if, they, if there's a journey to success in a professional sense or a personal sense, or should I say professional context and a personal context, it is that tenacity that will make it happen. It's the way you're going to persevere because passions come out of tenacity. Your Persevering something shows that you are passionate about it. So if you are passionate, there is no way that I can say there is, uh, you know, there is the problem of this nature. There's a problem of this nature. I, I refuse to believe that. If you want to get it, you will persevere so hard and you will find a way to get it done. Because that I believe is the only way uh, tenacity, I mean, I, I resonate that all over the place that I go. Tenacity of purpose is where somebody has to basically understand that you need to persevere in order to reach your purpose. So it, tenacity is my word. And if, if anybody wants to know why it is, I will tell you if, you, uh, if, if you want to know from a woman's perspective, I will let you know. So. Please, share with us. Why tenacity? Please share with us. <laughs> okay. So I believe, you know, the youth of today want to aspire to be like us, but they want to achieve it overnight. You know, they think, you know, we are so confident. We are so initiating. We are so, so this. But it, it has taken a long time for us to be, you know, confident in this position you know it is uh, you know you need to start small to dream big you know you need to in a hospitality environment I, I can't be the general manager as soon as I finish school you need to go through a process you need to go through all those different different departments what makes it tick you know what reforms the state you know the back of the house is so amazing to make the front of the house look beautiful you know so you the whole uh, you know the back of the house is where everything churns everything starts ticking you know and if it works like clockwork the front of the house looks beautifully dazzling and fireworks happen you know so i i believe that tenacity of purpose stays supreme in anybody who wants to see success in themselves as well as a professional mm-hmm. you know thank so, you so much no i i'm always hearing something like teamwork you know with you like work as a family work as a team and this is great because you know i i also feel that uh, in our industry we are not responsible for our own successes alone absolutely and it's absolutely. the success of everybody that comes together that actually makes all of us look good right and it's like Absolutely. us all together as one big family, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of hospitality mm-hmm. industry, isn't it? Whether it's a restaurant or a hotel. Um, yeah, it's just really beautiful. Hospitality. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we have one last question from me. And of course, you know, I have to um, share with everybody, what is your advice for hospitality professionals or even women working in hospitality or wants to work in hospitality what what would your advice be for them okay so i think there is a big dilemma or how do you say it i, I think there's a big <clears throat> big uh, 
negative that uh, women are not, you know, it's not great for them in hospitality. I, I don't believe, I don't say that at all. And there is so much scope for a woman um, who wants to this whole feminine side of things. The feminine values are needed in hospitality. That feminine energy, uh, that, you know, empathetic angle. I'm not saying that men are not empathetic, but what I mean is they, you know, we have that in us. You know, we, we nurture, we, you know, we know how our children are, we've had our children. So there is a little bit of understanding more of the kindness and the whole angle of be intuitive to a person, you know, understanding that person's, um, you know, what he or she is going through, we have that. So I think for a woman, it is a, it's a wonderful industry to be in. And it is not, uh, there are no late nights, and things like that. If you have that dilemma, I mean, I don't know, understand. You can actually work through it. There's smart ways of doing it. Um, but there is a great career for, as a woman to be in hospitality. Okay. And everybody also needs to understand that it's your character that makes you get into the hospitality. Yes. You can have this formal education that you want to get into, like we all did. I've got my Bachelor of Science. I've got my Master's in Public Administration. That is for me. That is for me to be successful. That is, that won't make you successful. Your education is not what's going to make you successful. It's that character that you have that uh, stays true to commitment, stays true to conviction, stays true to courage, stays true to courtesy, stays true to competence. That character is what makes a person get into that hospitality industry. And the, it, education is a must, but that is for yourself. You, you don't need to flaunt it. That is for you to understand. And that defines a little bit about how you want it is to find out what your capabilities and interests are. So that is why i believe it's it's your character that makes you want to get into that hospitality so i, I don't i i believe so much that people have such a great career in hospitality it's a long process it's a tenacity of purpose process but it's fully worth it it's absolutely worth it don't you agree absolutely absolutely <laughs> agree with that i would give you a high five here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe it so. Oh my God. I will not change it for the world. I will not, not change it for the world. Yes. I, and, I, and, and I think one thing, one thing I want to add something, um, Kylie, is, you know, lots of people have gone redundant. You know, they have re been redundant. Um, you know, I, I don't blame any institution. I don't blame the person um, it's sometimes about restructuring because of the situation but you haven't see happens you as a person who's redundant has to take it as an advantage actually actually you have to take it as advantage because it puts you in an opportunity to do something different you know it, it puts you into something that you will, I mean, you don't need to rush into something. You learn more. You start learning things. You start educating yourself. Ref reflect unto you. You know, do some self-awareness work to find out what needs to grow in you. Think always positive. Maybe this was a great eye-opener for somebody to, so, you know, start working in something else. You know, um, but never have that animosity or anger because you were put redundant. Because sometimes it's restructuring. Sometimes it's your age. Sometimes it's sometimes you feel it's not your work fit. You know, so you need to understand that. So all of these people, some people are so. I have spoken to so many people who have been redundant right now, and they're so angry. They call me and say, "Mahika, I don't know what to do." I said, "Don't." I said, I will talk to you for a while to understand this is a great thing for you. Please take it as a positive. 
and work something towards because it might take you towards sustainable farming. It might take you towards working for charity for a you know a, a charitable organization. Maybe it's an eye opener for you to move into a different path, but taking on your strengths. You know, so don't take this as a uh, negative because people are going through enough of trouble. So being peaceful and calm and understanding, there's always, always a productive way for anything. You know, that is the way forward, I think, in life so that nobody has this animosities. More evil, more animosity is not going to create this wonderful unit of this planet, this humanity, you know. It has to work together. So, I mean, take it or leave it, you know, use your network, reach out to people, find your worth, get out there and say, you know, I, you know, I, you told me once that, you know, if I have any kind of, you know, potential to reach out to you, now I'm reaching out to you, tell me what I need to do. But you need to be the person initiating, nobody's going to come to you, you know. There are guardian angels like us that will give you the advice, but there will never be, you know, so you need to basically reach out to people, you know. I think that is also things that people need to know about hospitality. Diversify your ideas, diversify your, your skills, yeah? Yeah. Look yes. outside of what, uh, look outside of what is unavailable into what is available and what is there for you That's absolutely. absolutely yeah stay absolutely. positive guys you know you have to stay positive in this situation <laughs> yes hospitality is a huge umbrella yeah, it's not look. just one job it is not just one job so there's so many yeah. things we can do and you know there are many many ways um the industry supports right it is after all the biggest industry of all all the time of yeah <laughs> okay great um any last words you'd like to share with us? Um, okay, so yeah, well, last words would be, guys, please understand that when you're in a uh, hospitality industry, sometimes you will find that you may not fit into the values and the purpose of that organization. But don't be disheartened. Never be disheartened because when you see that you feel that your values and your purpose is not aligned to the brand back and say, will you be willing, willing to adjust to that? Or is that you compromising your you need to look in two ways? And if you want, if you have to leave, you leave. But take all that experience and that whole wonderful, you know, you came up to this point to think like this because of that whole past, you know. So take all of that, move on. And if you have, looking at it again from the point of the person, the employer, reach out to your network and see if this person's personality, person's values, person's purpose, fits into something else and reach out to your network because we are all in this together, you know, and it's not a break off. It's sometimes, you know, your personalities, your lifestyle, your everything changes, but it's not to break it off, but to make it all work together. Like the way you said, diversifying and working together, you know, so always reaching out to people and trying to fit that person in so that everybody is still in that game you know and now it's the time for everybody to get together and work together integrate you know it's not about fragmentation it's just one unit learning from other people's wonderful businesses learning from other people's initiatives not being a copycat or duplicating it but understanding the best taking the best out of it you know so those are my last words Everything is positive. Everything Thank is positive. You. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time and thank you very much for joining us on Heartbeat. Um, I had a wonderful time talking to you and, you know, um, good luck with your next role that's coming up very shortly. And I would love, love, love to see you in Sri Lanka. Thank you so much. 
you need to keep in touch with me and i i guarantee you your experience of sri lanka will be totally different when you come next time and i will be part of that guidance but uh, for sure your experience of sri lanka will be totally different and i hope you come soon thank you so much maika thank you for your time